I'm Radosław Więcławek and this is brother Łukasz Miśko and we are honored to have uh, father uh, Gerard uh, Francisco Timoner, the 87th successor of Saint Dominic, the master of the Order of Preachers. Uh, we are now in uh, Kraków at the convent, which is the cradle of Polish Dominicans. Uh, Father Gerard uh, has been in Poland for a few days uh, and he is visiting convents here and is continuing his visitation of the Polish province, which uh, began in Ukraine and Belarus uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, thank you for your taking uh, the time to be with us. I would like to ask you uh, about the number uh, three next to your name. Uh, could you tell us uh, what does it mean? Uh, there are a few people in our pastoral ministry who <laughs> asked me uh, about that, and I didn't know what to say. Uh, but they associated uh, the number with the royal, royal families. Okay, so <laughs> perhaps in Europe that number would mean you are part of the royal family. But as you know, the Philippines came under the United States because of the Spanish-Cuban War and therefore the influence. And in the United States, if the name is shared mm -hmm. in the family, like a father gives to his son his name, like Lukas, right. <laughs> so the, the son becomes <laughs> Lukas Jr. Mm -hmm. and he becomes Lukas Sr. Mm. And if his son, if his grandson <laughs> will be given the name Lukas, he becomes the third. Mm. It's that simple. So that's your story. Yeah, You are that's, a grandson of a Gerard. Uh, that's the thing. I, I think <laughs> technically it's wrong because my grandfather was named Francisco. My mm. father was named Francisco. And then in my case, they added Gerard. No need to distinguish. So, but... I don't know the custom, so right. They maintain a, so cool custom. I mean, the third. for us, it was just <laughs> awesome. I assure you, there is no default. <laughs> 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 so mystery solved. Yes, uh, mystery solved. So let's uh, go with the uh, next question. Uh, you came to Poland for a visitation. Uh, what are the goals of your visits, like the one with us today? And like what I said today, <laughs> <laughs> the goal of the visitation is, of course, it's part of our constitutional duty. We need to visit. The master of the order has to visit all the brothers at least two times during his term of nine years. If he cannot do that, then he's delegate. Right. Mm -hmm. Canon law also tells us we have to visit the houses and the members, meaning the community and then the brothers. So that's the purpose of the visitation. But I think theologically and in a more, in a deeper way, in a more profound way, it is really to recall that it is God who visits all of us. And that is what I said, no? Mm -hmm. We commemorate that every time we pray the canticle of Zechariah, blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come and visited his people. And in this visitation, it is that awareness that it is God who visits all of us. It is a time for us to see and discover the good things the Lord is doing through you and in you. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you are like Elizabeth and we are like Mary, right? No, we are both. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Too> <laughs> we bad. are the ones being visited by God. And okay. it's the same experience of Elizabeth and of Mary. It is no wonder that masters of the order have called visitations as pilgrimages. Mm pilgrimages because for Dominic the feet of the preaching brothers is a holy I mean where the feet of the mm. preaching brothers tread that is a holy place that is why he wanted to be buried under, under the feet, feet of, the brethren. of the brothers it was not an act of humility no <laughs> for Dominic it is really to signify that the feet of the preaching brothers is a source of holiness Amazing. I've never mm -hmm. thought about it that way. Uh, if yeah. you look at the first reading during the Solemnity of St. Dominic from the prophet Isaiah, blessed, uh, what's this? How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings mm -hmm. glad tidings. 
Okay, we are speechless, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we, we need can't to remain so in our job, so, <laughs> so we have to continue. You, you mentioned uh, uh, pilgrimages, your pilgrimages, and you talk to many brothers and sisters <clears throat> every day. Um, you, in fact, do not only meet them, uh, but you also listen uh, and hear to their stories and problems. What do you uh, do they bring to your life? How do you manage to assist them with their burdens? Aha. <laughs> <laughs> you know, part of preaching the gospel is listening first to the gospel, and part of preaching to the people is to listen to the people. In other words, listening is very much part of the ministry of preaching. Yes, we contemplate God's word, but we also listen, in a way, contemplate the life stories of our brothers and sisters. That's the only way we can learn from them. Uh, and as priests, you know this, sometimes sitting in the confessional or in the counseling room, we just listen to people. And sometimes that is all it takes to listen. And after listening to them, they will tell you, Father, thank you so much. You know, I, I, I feel lighter now. And you did nothing, but you just did what you're doing now. You, you just nod. <laughs> Even if you don't understand, you nod. But the, the other person feels he or she is listened to. Yes. And I think that is uh, an important thing to, to do. And it's not just carrying a burden. It's also sharing the joy mm -hmm. of their experience. And a joy that is shared is joy multiplied. <laughs> As somebody said, I'm paraphrasing, of course. So it is really a moment of, of encounter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you've already uh, had a string of talks with brothers and sisters uh, of the Polish province. Uh, have you found any characteristic feature of realizing Domin Dominican uh, charism uh, in our province that sets us apart or is coming across the board? What is really impressive for me is in all the communities that we visited, uh, we, we joined the brothers in the community, you know, in recreation, and you can just see the joy of the brothers being together. <laughs> uh, you can sense it's authentic joy. I, even if we are not there, I we know that you do what you do. <laughs> it so, may be the power of that pizza that we share, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. so that, that could be the <laughs> the the excuse to to sure. gather together. But of course, more than that is this this kind of yeah, joy that really that, that, that we see. Yeah. Uh, your apostolic creativity and dedication is also very impressive for me. Uh, you can people can sense that you are ministering to them as brothers, as a community, because. I don't see one doing it alone. There is always another brother helping him, assisting him, and I think that's very, very important. Uh, even in your uh, the the intellectual mission of the order, furthering that in the very different centers of studies, it's amazing for me to realize that in many communities you have your own schools, academicum. You call that by many names. It's not formal in the sense that you grant diplomas or degrees, but. It's the intellectual mission of the order being present. And of course, your big institutions. Uh, you also have brothers who are helping uh, in the renewal of religious congregations because they are trained in psychology. That's right. uh, but you also have brothers, and most of the brothers that we have seen in many communities, you have this dedication to the celebration of the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So uh, would that be something that sets us apart as a province? Something that makes us different than other provinces? If, or is that if you look at many feature? countries in Europe where there are no people lining up for confession, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not right. because of the brothers only, but it's <laughs> also because of the people. So it's a, a testimony to the people. It says something about the people. But also the availability, your generosity to be available to have this duty for confession in the sacrament of reconciliation, I think is a very important aspect of preaching mm -hmm. because your seven minutes on the pulpit, compare that with your one minute in the confessional, 
that is addressed to the person directly, I think it has a deeper effect on this person than the seven or ten minutes on the po- both are important. Both are important. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is, in terms of addressing somebody in a very direct and personal way, that happens in the sacrament of reconciliation. One brother, one Dominican brother said, mm-hmm. I felt you know, the importance of my priesthood at that very moment when people feel so far away from God because of sin. And then I feel so close to them because it is at that time that they want to be close to God and becoming an instrument, a minister of God for that yeah. restoration of the relationship is That's really a great privilege mm-hmm. for us to yes. be able to uh, witness that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And of course, we too. We know that because we also go to confession and we know too how that feels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. You've just specified about the Polish province. What is the most important aspect, in your opinion, of a Dominican charism? In general. In general. I, I, I think it would be a mistake to point to one element of Dominican charism as the essence Mm-hmm. of Dominican charism. And it's our mistake, I think, as friars. That we sometimes mm-hmm. do that. That we, we do that. We take we one. Say, this uh, is it. This right. is it. When in fact, that this is it is the harmonious combination mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. all of these elements, which I think is the genius of Dominic. Uh, in, in, in other words, uh, combining, you know, uh, common life with the apostolate, which are attention sometimes because... Oh, they are. <laughs> okay. Or no action pain. and contemplation. These are mm-hmm. always yeah. intention uh, together. And I think the the essence of Dominican charism is the combination of all of this. It's not just preaching because, let us be honest, there are better preachers than us in the pulpit. Way. <laughs> <laughs> there are also better professors than us in the pulpit. There are also better these, etc., etc. But no one combines all of these elements together uh, in, in, in harmony, not just in creative tension, but in, in harmony. And I think that is the essence of Dominican charism. And you know why it's the essence? Because if you neglect one, we feel something is wrong. I mean, we lose that sense of equilibrium, that 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 balance, and we. Uh, I mean, you can be an excellent preacher, you can be a very talented, well received authority because of your books, because you are a great professor, you are a preacher that can fill stadiums and coliseum, etc. But you don't have a community. You cannot. That's not Dominican. Mm-hmm. You can have a very good community, but you are just in the community and you're not going out, uh, you know, responding to the call of the Dominican. apostolate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's not also very Dominican. You are an excellent professor, but you don't come to common life, like common prayer, etc., or be with your brothers just to share a meal. I mean, it's the combination all of, of all of this put together that makes us who we are. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to ask uh, a question uh, about wa- one of uh, the aspects of uh, our um, charism, uh, because because we official are called in Latin Ordo Predicatorum, the order of preachers. So, what should Dominican preaching uh, be uh, characterized by? Mm-hmm. First, we go back to our founder. He, he Saint Dominic, is is a man of the gospel, mm-hmm. vir evangelicus. But he is also a joyful friar, a joyful brother. And you can be a brother if you have other brothers. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, it's, it's the joy of preaching the gospel. Uh, I, I, I think that is really uh, very important for us that characterizes all the branches of the Dominican family. But as a family of preachers, we are not just homilists. 
Mm-hmm. One corporate or brother uh, wisely said, we are not an order of homilists. We are an order of preachers. And Good distinction. And Pope Francis even mentioned that in his letter to the order Predicator Grazie in celebration of the Jubilee of Dominic. And he said, the charism of preaching that Dominic received overflowed into the different branches of the Dominican family. The very first time that a Pope enumerated all the branches, friars, (laughs) nuns, apostolic sisters, priestly fraternities, the Dominican youth movement, and the Dominican laity. And then he said, you, it, it has found its expression in the writings of the Dominican laywoman, Catherine of Siena, a doctor of the church. Mm-hmm. But also in the teachings of the professors, Thomas Aquinas, Albert the Great, but also uh, in the works of art of Beato Angelico or the works of charity of Rosa de Lima, Martin de Porres, Juan Macias, and in the many martyrs who, when their voices were silenced, became more eloquent in their preaching of the gospel. In other words, preaching the gospel takes on many forms because the gospel has to address all the spheres of life of humanity. And of course, it is also important, the preaching in the pulpit mm-hmm. and the preaching inside the confessional, <laughs> which is a private but very direct kind of, of preaching. Uh, does that mean that we are the only ones doing this? No. A charism is given, is a gift by the Holy Spirit for the building up of the body of Christ, the church. Look at it this way. Dominic is like the champion mm-hmm. or the, the one who promotes the idea that preaching is an important charism in the church. It doesn't mean that it is only us who preach, but it is Dominic who is the one calling attention to that fact. As you know very well, when we were novices, we were taught mm-hmm. only the bishops preached. In fact, One Dominican historian said, when Dominic asked the Pope, he wanted to found an order of preachers. One cardinal was scratching his head because he said, why does this man want to found an order of bishops? (laughs) Because only bishops preach. But Dominic is so successful that today, all priests preach. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's not just the the chameleons who are supposed to take care of the sick Mm -hmm. or the brothers of St. John of God. It is part of the corporal work of mercy. But they are the so-called champions of this. Evangelical poverty is part of our baptismal promises. But it was Francis of Assisi who highlighted the importance of evangelical poverty and so on. So in other words, Dominic is the one who who championed, so to speak, Uh, that the charism of preaching is important for the building up of the church, the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, You mentioned listening to brothers as as a part of your role, but how do you understand in general your role as uh, the master of the order of preachers? Oh, yes, that's it. That is very very difficult because <laughs> I was socius to Brother Bruno. As socius, I introduced him during visitations and I said, brothers, the master of the order, the successor of St. Dominic, and then I leave him behind. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, now I'm the victim. <laughs> <laughs> so you did your job really well. <laughs> But what's your job description then? <laughs> Well, the job description, according to the LCO, is the master of the order is the successor of St. Dominic. It is his job to be Dominic to the order, to be a brother to the brothers, to call attention to what Dominic did for the order. That's the official. <laughs> Personally, however, <laughs> I, I told the brothers in Congo, I realized that I learned a lot during visitation. And I think 
I should be called a student of the order rather than the master or the teacher of the order because everywhere I go, I learn something. I think at the end of the, my term, I should be given a diploma about uh, Dominican studies, no? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I learned a lot about the order going around. But the things I learned, I bring that to, to the other brothers and sisters in the order. Like our meeting this morning, when we were talking about music ministry and the other experiences in other parts of the order today and how we can really learn from one another. Mm -hmm. So in a way, that is our job as visitators to, you know, to tell you what we have learned from the rest because we think you should learn that, but also to get the good things we learn from you and we bring that to, to others. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> it's nice to have uh, you among us. Uh, last question. Uh, I know that you still uh, have some meetings ahead of you, but can you think of any specific situation during your during your uh, visit to the Polish province that you will remember that was somehow moving for you? There are a lot of these things. One thing that I mentioned is how I see the dedication of the brothers in accompanying the young people and how you work in teams most of the times, and how you dedicate yourself to study intellectual mission of the order, but also to the pastoral ministry of the order, and how you use your expertise in the other sciences in helping you bring people closer to God, even the human social sciences. But one striking, but the, the, the most striking for me in this visitation is the visitation of the province of Poland of brothers outside Poland. Mm -hmm. The brothers in Vitebsk, for instance, in Belarus, Belarus, working together in that part of the country. And they are very few, you know, Catholics mm -hmm. and they are doing their ministry as best as they can. In fact, they were building a big pastoral center which compared to where they are living is really showing me the importance that they give to the people rather than to themselves. I, I stayed in an office, <laughs> you know, makeshift room. It was probably and, more comfortable than the actual little priory that the friars have, Which right? is, I think, more comfortable than some of the rooms that they occupy. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that one. The second one is, of course, Ukraine. <laughs> uh, and there are so mem many memories in Ukraine. The letters of Yaroslav, of course, uh, the most translated brother in the mm. order today. <laughs> Even more Be translated than you are. Of <laughs> course, of course, because <laughs> it's just the three official languages of the order for me, but he is translated into Slovak, into Czech, into <laughs> the many other languages. I, I think, uh, and your support the support of the brothers of Poland to your vicariate in Ukraine is also uh, very moving and very inspiring. But also seeing how the lay people that you work with are really working very closely together. I think that it, the, the Saint Martin in, in Fastiv is really very touching. The first thing that we did when we arrived in Ukraine is to celebrate the Eucharist, the first communion of about 10 or 12 children in a war zone that is the first act we did <laughs> mm. to celebrate the sacrament of communion to young minds who are probably traumatized by war in again Chortkiv or Kharkiv <laughs> Chortkiv Short in Chortkiv the children under the care of the Dominican sisters gave us gifts bullet shells, big ah. ones, that they have decorated wow. children. Yeah. So that it's like the mystery of the cross, the symbol of death that is now the symbol of life. Right. It's like they want to take away the sting of the violence of war and of death from this metal, decorate it, and transform it into something that is beautiful. 
And I, I think these are really very moving experiences for me. When Yaroslav brought us to this bridge of Irpin, mm -hmm. on one side is the destroyed bridge, on the other side is a bridge that is bigger and looks stronger. And I told them, I think, dear brothers, this is your ministry, <laughs> to become bridges or builders of bridges. In a time of conflict and of war, you must prepare the people how to be healed of the trauma of war. And of course, how to be able to move towards liberation from this toxic memory through forgiveness and reconciliation. Of course, the violence must first stop before that can happen, but they should already prepare for that. That's what we are hoping for. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Sometimes it takes an outsider to come and uh, with fresh eyes to see the the goodness that is happening yes. here in the province. And if that outsider happens to be the 87th successor <laughs> of St. Dominic himself, <laughs> Dominic then to us. That's part of the job description, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing great. So, okay. Well, Thank you for being so with us. So thank you for this opportunity to have this kind of dialogue, which is, I think, part of the visitation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So thank you so much for the meeting and thank you for your time. And thank you also for your patience. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you.